This is Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a quick time on podcast. He's Randy Sherman and I'm Tony Miller. Today we're talking about ball screen offense options. Uh, hopefully you are joining us live here video wise or going back. You can watch it back on replay. We'll be sure to have diagrams for this as well as some video today. So it will be a little bit more interactive and, and more visual. So those of you that are listening to this can go back and watch it. We'll point you to where you can watch those things a little bit later on in the show. Before we get into today's episode, a bit, big thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. We're in the middle of winter. Randy and I were talking beforehand. I'm actually down in Florida, so uh, this wouldn't necessarily apply to me. But I know a lot of you are listening to this in colder parts of the country. And 323 Sports has some great outerwear options for you, for your staff, for your team. To find out more about what they can do for your program, visit 323sports.com. Or you can get in contact with a rep sales at 323sports.com. We'll be sure to do it right for your sports program. Randy, this is one of your things. I'm going to give credit to you right away. So things that we're going to see today, especially the videos, are some things that you've used before. You kind of want to talk origin where this originated from and uh, kind of the series that you have behind this. Um, yeah, just uh, some of my video making um, projects. Thought that the Utah Jazz would be a good subject and um I think the whole idea came from the uh, the sort of like the idea that the, a player Rudy Gobert for the Jazz is like you know he's more thought of as a defensive player and and I wanted to show like how he's in addition to him being a terrific defensive player has a pretty good grasp of of how to be a good screener in in ball screen situations. So I think I set about the project with that motive in mind to show that like, you know, it's, yeah, he's a great shot blocker and, and, and rim protector, obviously, but, but he also has a pretty good grasp of, of how to, how to play that side of the ball in terms of being a good ball screener and being a good ball screener is more than just using your body as a blocking dummy. There's like an understanding of angles and rescreening and, and uh, adjusting the screen angle to, to fit the coverage. So uh, that that's kind of where we're going today with that, with these video examples. For those of you that are watching, coaches that are running five out, you'll see some of the concepts that we've talked about before on this show, that maybe how you can uh, use them within a system that uses more ball screens or if you're looking to add more ball screens. And we'll talk about the transition aspect of it as well as the half court side of it. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into this, the first one here. Uh, we're going to start out kind of a little bit simple and then get a little bit more complex with it. Um, but the one that we have talked about before on this show before, just simply a middle ball screen. Randy, if you want to go ahead and start with this one. Yeah, so this would be an example of of what I would call spread ball screen or middle ball screen where, um, you know, if we, if we were to get very elementary, um, we would we would want to talk about the ball screen being a two player action the, the the in this diagram player one and player five being the two players in the action players two three and four being the players out of the action so one point i'd like to make today would be um that that the your job as an offensive coach is to not only coach the players in the actions player one and five in this example but also players two three and four um so um yeah, in, in middle ball screen, what we want is is we I I'll break it down really quick in transition. We want this to happen within the first four to five seconds of the ball screen. This 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 drag screen, the four, first four to five seconds of the shot clock, um, somewhere in the middle third ish area of the court, um, and two and three all the way at rim depth in the corners. Uh, four holding the sideline there with three. And, uh, you know, the purpose of using an action such as a ball screen is to create uh, penetration, which will lead to an advantage. So come down the court, we think spacing, action, advantage in that order. So there's there's a, you know, a quick overview, if you will. Yeah. And this fr frame you just pulled up here in the bottom right corner. Maybe the floor is a little tilted to the right. We didn't come down. The ball came down the 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 court with no one in front of it. So the, the ball handler takes it a little bit deep, and we get right into side ball screen. Same thing would apply. We got a two-player action, players one and five in the action, players two, three, and four out of the action. So we want to know our spacing template, our positioning, 
whether we're wing ball screen, spread ball screen, um, where, for lack of a better word, our players outside of the ball screen stand. In the wing ball screen two and three, if I were drawing it, I'd move three over a little bit closer to the sideline. I like four spot. Um, so anytime we've got a double side on a ball screen, I like both, both players to what we call hold the sideline. That's an old Dan Tony term of holding the sidelines. We want to create maximum space for penetration. I would think that probably most, if they're looking at this, the ideal is what's there on the left as everybody runs down the floor. Mm -hmm. But as most of us know, it usually gets sloppy very quickly and you end up with two, your two guards running down the same side of the floor. Absolutely. And I've seen people get frustrated with that. Um, I've seen players try to adjust that. So they'll have somebody run through and that kills the spacing and the timing and whatnot. And so um, I guess my point is don't, don't feel like this has to be perfect. Teach your players. We've done this with our guys this year and it's helped a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you run down the floor, like do your best, but obviously what happens on the other end, a lot of times will dictate your lane and how you run down the floor for a transition offense. So if we don't have everything nice and neat, that's not the end of the world. Let's just keep mm -hmm. playing out of it. And right. You see there on the right hand side is typically the alternative to the nice and pretty that you see there on the left hand side. Yeah. One thing too, I would say that I've begun to look at it is like, where's the ball screen? In, in frame in the top left, it's middle and frame on the bottom right. It's it's side or, or wing, if you will. So, you know, kind of think in shapes, meaning if the ball screen's here, the three players outside of it, we want to be here, here, and here. If the ball screen is here, like it is in the bottom left on the wing or the bottom right on the, on the wing, we want to be here, here, and here. You know, uh, seam or slot, uh, wing and corner. Mm -hmm. And there's advantages to both of these. You know, the first Absolutely. one there, you get not diagrammed, but you get this kind of the lift or the shake action on the backside. Mm -hmm. But then in the bottom right, you get a clear side and no help defense. And so if you have somebody that you could throw the rim to, throw the ball to at the rim for the five on the roll or a pocket pass, uh, then you have nobody really on that side guarding it. So advantages room, to both of those. And room to reject in, on the bottom right too. If one doesn't right. want to use the ball screen, we've got an empty side. Where and and if he did reject player one did reject he's got player two in his headlights if he draws baseline help and we could put the defense in a rotation that way we have a lot of success we'll reject it and he'll turn around and set like that crackback screen so five will go back and set the screen for four and then four has the opportunity for an open jump shot five sets the screen and then rolls to the back side of the rim so there's a lot of things that you can do absolutely something like that um, here's some video of, of each of those here. Okay. Yeah. So this will be the Utah Jazz, obviously with Rudy Gobert, um, the the spread ball screen in transition. You see that kind of good floor balance and shape, and right into the spread ball screen, um, where where the the screen. Let's, let's see if we can catch the shot clock. It's Fifteen seconds. That's a little slow. I don't know where this this possession might have started with a dead ball or something. I don't know, but a little slow, but. The Jazz aren't one of the more higher tempo teams either, so could be right. that. But um, okay, and here's the uh, wing wing ball screen, the second one. Yeah, so you can already see Rudy in the trail position. There's nobody in the guy. I like the thing I like here is the ball handler takes it kind of deep. He gets down below the free throw line on the empty corner uh, on that empty side. That gives him more room on the accept side of the screen. If he does choose to accept the screen. For middle penetration off the ball screen if he if he's up a little bit higher um you know he takes it down below free throw line uses change of direction change of speed we get a good a good ball screen and uh paint touch right off the break happen smoothly be another wing uh these these are a couple years old so you see some players who are no longer with the jazz but uh yeah so there's another wing ball screen and and what I like to pay attention to is not only the two players in the action, but the three players out of the action. I think that that I can't coach that enough. If I'm a coach, like if you're in the action, execute the action. If you're out of the action, stay out of the action. Um, you know, there's 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 a time you can see Bell number three there try to maybe make a cut behind his defender's head if his head is turned, things like that. There is a time to cut and move and screen to occupy help. 
But I think a good beginning point with players is like, know your shapes. If the ball screen's here, we want to be here, here, and here. And, and uh, you know, you can see that reflected in these videos. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's go on to the next one here. Okay. Uh, adjustment to ice defenses. So as, as teams trying to keep the ball on one side of the floor here, what's an adjustment that a team can make in the ball screen? Well, I think what we're going to see in, in this video um, is, if my recollection is, is clear, is that there's going to be uh, a change of the angle of the screen where maybe Gobert was – was approaching the screen to set it like a regular, like spread ball screen, you know, uh, with his, with his, with his butt more toward one of the sidelines. But, you know, pay, I always ask players, what are you seeing and what are you hearing? Right. So if it, when I'm approaching the ball screen, what am I seeing and what am I hearing from the opponent? So what am I seeing is their icing coach. What am I hearing? Maybe you hear the player X five, they're saying, Hey, ice, 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 or blue, 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 or down, 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 or whatever. So those they're telling you that, you know, like, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? So when you when you get those cues from your opponent, it's time to change the angle, which is what you're I think we're going to see Rudy Gobert do here. He's going to change that angle from more of what probably was going to be a spread ball screen to more of a flat ball screen. And that combats the ice coverage. So you see him approaching the screen and then he changes the angle once he hears ice, ice, ice and, and flattens that ball screen and sits it on the hip of the icing defender, uh, the on-ball defender, and that leaves a little bit of a pocket for, for a pass to penetrate through. So you see Tristan Thompson dropped. He's yelling ice, 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 and they adjust the angle, and now we just, we've just we got a, a, a nice pocket to throw the pocket pass through. And these are typically just automatic things, right? This is not something you're calling it's you're listening to hear it or looking to see it and the guy should automatically adjust to it. Right. I would say so. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it happens on the fly. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's part of the knowledge that players need to possess to play ball screen offense, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like we've got to, we got to recognize coverages, recognize adjustments and, and counter. And that needs to be absorbed into our, knowledge as a player and and I, I picked Gobert in this instance because you know the the knock on him is he's only a defensive player he's not you know so well he's not a scorer maybe not not necessarily a scorer but he has value on the offensive side because he un, he gets these things that you at, are asking about how what am I seeing what am I hearing I heard ice I'm gonna flatten the screen out like like that that's part of the growth of a player too. And that's, that's a, a good skill set also to be a good ball screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd we say used, it's part of it. Yeah. We used to be able to get away with just sending a guy out there, the biggest guy that we could find out there mm -hmm. setting a screen. And then we just tell him just roll to the front of the rim. And that was effective at creating an advantage, but as these defenses, be, the defenses have become, you know, smarter and, and faster making the adjustments like ice and, you know, some other things too, switching and going yeah. under and that kind of stuff too. You have to, you actually have to teach your big men to read and to listen, like you said, and to make the adjustments on the fly because it won't be that clean defense plays it the same way all the time. Yeah. One teaching point that I do like for, for bigs is, is, is screening the back pocket of the on-ball defender that, that can kind of help you it gives you a rule that that can maybe help you through some different adjustments. So like in that video, that clip you just showed when, when Gobert is approaching the screen, the back pocket of, of the on-ball defender is, is, is sort of facing him. Then he hears ice, 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 the on-ball defender sort of jumps to the side and he screens the other back pocket by flattening his, his screen and, and, so like that's one maybe if, if, a, if there's a takeaway for viewers or listeners is is it if you're if you can get your ball screener to follow that commandment if you will then then you might make some of these adjustments naturally. Yeah, that's really good. This is one more of those adjustments. So let's talk about this. I just kind of explained it, but uh, going under and two scenarios here. One of them in transition, and then the one in the bottom right could be in transition or within mm -hmm. your half court. Yeah, these are rescreens, right? So, so what I started noticing a few years ago, probably five years ago or so, I, I watched 
I went through like a, a, a really big phase of, of really where I was watching a lot of European FIBA, EuroLeague, uh, Champions League basketball. And one thing I saw across the board was this idea of rescreening when the on-ball defender goes under. And for the coaches I work with who a lot of times coach high school basketball, uh, they're, they're going to see a lot of under, like the players going under all the actions, under off-ball screens, under on-ball screens, because few are the players who can just like maybe punish them by pulling up on the other side of the screen and shoot so they can go under the screen, meet you back at the ball, and stay intact on defense. So um, – the under is uh, is something that we need a solution for as well. So when when the defense goes under, I, I call it twisting. We twist the screen and automatically rescreen. So I'm I'm coming. I'm approaching the ball screen. The guy's either going to sort of move up into the ball handler, which I know he's going to go over, or he's going to sort of move away and go under me if I'm the screener. In that case, I let him go under the ball screen or the ball handler sort of drags his man out and maybe a dribble or two and then crosses and brings it back. And we twist and rescreen and then try to get the back pocket on the second screen to get downhill penetration. I think that's what we're going to see here. Mm -hmm. And then on the bottom right. Too, okay, yeah. We'll put these together here. Same. Yeah, we'll same put them idea. together. Gotcha. So the bottom right would be top. Top left is, is twist. Bottom right would be turn. So five is down screening. One's bringing the ball. Five is going to go down screen away for two coming out of the corner. Again, what do we see? If he trailed, two would have curled. If he overplayed, two could have back cut. But in this case, he, go, he shoots the gap. He goes under the screen. So player two is going to maybe get the catch, but not have like going to step right into a shot or have an advantage on the catch. The, the guy goes under the screen, meets him at the ball, and there's no advantage. So Gobert, in this case, in these video clips, but but your screener should turn. I call this a turn. So there's twist in the top left, turn in the bottom right. Turn and immediately rescreen, and we get this sort of step-up style wing ball screen that's tough. And we'll see both of those. Yeah, where where it's in in it's an automatic. So there's the turn where there's a screen and a rescreen off the off ball screen. The, the cutter gets a catch, but, but is not really open on the catch so much. So, and he goes right into a rip and go right off that screen, the rescreen from go bear. So it's two actions, bang, bang, bang. One counters the other. You go under cool. You met him at the ball. You're going to immediately right into a, into a, uh, into a rescreen for, for, uh, for the for the cutter who came off the down screen a few more there and these are these again like you asked earlier these are automatic reactions we're not calling this we're teaching this on on monday wednesday and thursday so we use it on tuesday and friday it's not a call it's it's knowledge <laughs> it's it's application of good basketball principles um yeah, I like these kind of clips, too, because you even see what happens off the ball, you know, that push, pull or circle movement, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. But um, you see the adjustment of all five players. So this pick and roll is not <clears throat> just the, what, you know, the ball and the ball screener, but the guys off the ball here. You saw yeah. as when he came off the screen this way, everybody was pushing towards and then it flipped it, flipped it around, turned it around yeah, and the guys came get... behind it. And to your point, it creates an advantage for either the roll guy or you're going to have somebody open there on the backside because everybody's taught tag a guy that rolls or whatever. And so, you know, you you almost like double your playbook with the amount of things that you do. These concepts allow you to ba basically on the fly have multiple plays that you're running at the same time, which is why we've harped on this extensively and I've talked mm -hmm. about it. But, you know, playing out a concept is it's almost – more advent the guys that like to run plays i know you like to call plays but you almost get more plays running out of concepts because you can on the fly find the advantage and, and run a new play without having to call something and the defense sets up and the frustrations that defense advantage lost and etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah and, and um, we're actually count countering what's happening on the court rather than call and hope call and hope let's call right. this one and hope it works oh it didn't work call another one hope it works call and hope no way to go no, no yes. bueno. That, yes, we don't do that. Great way to describe that. it. 
Well, two, and you for somebody, not everybody's like this. I know the high school coaches that watch this, a lot of you are not facing this yet, but you don't have a shot clock. So feel free to call and hope, call and hope, call and hope. But, you know, my teams have 22 seconds by the time we get in the half court. We got right. we got to make some plays on the fly here. Um, yeah, and that that's uh, well put. That's the best argument for having some sort of shot clock mechanism is that you don't have time to kind of like, um, call and hope or just run it again or another reversal next, you know, you, so that's why I always argue the shot clock will make you a better teacher of the game because now you got to start teaching things like twist and turn. We don't have time to run another off ball screen and on the other side to see if we can get that one and then reverse it. And run. We've got to read it and combat it because tick tock. Right. So um, yeah. So those are those are good things to to try to simple reads adjustments uh, whatever you want to call them counters to to begin with. Um, the, the, another thought I would offer would be uh, if you look at at some of the data in the study, like the ball screen itself for for the ball handler or the roller is often an in like those inefficient those are sometimes inefficient shots. Like th those aren't really high ranking in terms of shot types in terms of, of, of points per shot. Those are kind of low ranking. So I think we think of using the ball screen itself, the two players in the action of like, how can my ball handler score or how can the roller score? But oftentimes the better mm -hmm. shot is we use the ball screen to get penetration or to get, get that pocket pass to the roller, and then the defense is collapsed and he kicks, or we get a drive off the screen, and now it looks like we're going to score, and one of one of the, the three defenders outside of the action is now called in to help, and they, we draw in the defense and kick and make extra passes, and then, then we do get to high-efficiency catch-and-shoot, standstill shots um, that, that we make at a higher rate than we might make at, as the – the pull up off the ball screen or, or, uh, you know, that, that, you know, a tough acrobatic finish where the, our ball handler got downhill and, and has to make a tough finish begin to think spacing action advantage spacing. When we arrive in the court action is our drag ball screen, whether it's side or wing or wing and advantage maybe for the ball handler or the roller, but quite likely it's going to be a, one of the three amigos outside of the ball screen. Mm -hmm. It's those dominoes that we talk about, right? Sure. It's the block, it's the block four, four down. That's going to benefit from it. It's not the first to the fall. Correct. So, yeah, and it's, it's the catalyst of the possession, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then the rest is the reaction. So the catalyst is the ball screen that we use to set the possession in motion. If you will, that's the, the chemical that starts the reaction is the ball screen. And, and the reaction then is, is, the, the ball moving to find the open player to combat the rotating defense. If you were watching this, you saw that the videos that we showed are much longer and you may be wondering, where can I see all of those videos? Two places that I would direct you. The first one is to Randy's radius athletics, YouTube page, mm -hmm. You'll find the videos there, or you can go to his website, radiusathletics.com. This particular series that we're working through here is all in one blog post. You can find it there. Just search Rudy Gobert. It's from actually several years ago, but you'll yeah. see um, each of those listed. And there's actually a couple more, too, that we didn't even cover yeah. today. Before we wrap things up, big thanks to our sponsors at Sideline Interactive. They're the leading manufacturers of scoreboard and scoring tables for high schools and colleges around the country. Randy, tell people about what was in your Beyond the Scoreboard newsletter that you sent out this week. Yeah, this this in itself would be a great discussion. Um, I ran across a great question. I'm always looking for great questions to ask the coaches that I work with. And uh, I wrote a blog post about one in particular that I ran across. And um, you can find that at radiusathletics.substack.com. That's my sort of like subscription blog. This is a free article. You don't have to be a paid subscriber to, to read this. So head over to radiusathletics.substack.com. You can find it on my Twitter at Radius Athletics 2. It's not without scrolling too far. You, you'll see where I promoted the article that I wrote. Basically just asking questions of coaches to ask for some introspection. I don't want to give away the question I asked, but 
um, because I want you to go find it and, and interact with me and let me know what you think. But um, yeah, Beyond the Scoreboard is a series that I sort of write on my on my blog. That's always going to be free articles that uh, sponsored by Sideline Interactive that that um, sort of just ask you to think beyond the scoreboard, beyond things within the lines and think about the craft of coaching, um, the the skills that a coach needs to be a better teacher of the game beyond the scoreboard, beyond the diagrams, beyond the plays and things like that. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, I would check it out. I, I really, I really thought it was a great question. I got some thought provoking answers from some coaches and I shared them there. So head over there. Yeah. Those are always great resources and we do appreciate sideline interactive. You can find out more about them at sidelineinteractive.com. Appreciate all of you who joined us live this week. If you missed any part of the show, you can go back and watch the whole thing at the Radius Athletics YouTube page. Just simply search Radius Athletics or Hoops Forum. Or if you're of the listening type and you want to listen to this in the podcast, just search a quick timeout on any major podcasting platform and you'll find the audio version of the show there. For Randy Sherman, I'm Tony Miller. Appreciate again all of you who joined us. We'll talk to you again next time on Hoops Forum. <laughs>